Hi, and welcome to our video for 1.2 Atomic Theories. And kind of continuing along from our last video in the history of atomic theories. Today we're going to take a look at a very important one from this guy called Rutherford from 1909. And he did what's called the gold foil experiment. All right, you need to remember Rutherford gold foil experiment. So we're going to take a look here at what his gold foil experiment is all about. In the early 1900s, J.J. Thompson proposed that an atom was a uniform sphere of positively charged matter in which electrons were embedded. This model is sometimes called the plum pudding model. Electrons are embedded in a sphere of positive matter similar to raisins in plum pudding. In 1910, Ernest Rutherford, Hans Geiger, and Ernest Marsden carried out experiments in which very thin foils of metal were used as targets for alpha particles emitted from a radioactive source. Click on what Rutherford expected to observe, the results Rutherford expected based on Thompson's model of the atom. Based on Thompson's model, Rutherford expected that the positively charged alpha particles should pass through the uniform sphere of positively charged matter with little or no deflection. Click on actual experimental results to see what actually happens. Rutherford observed that the majority of alpha particles penetrated the foil either undeflected or with only a slight deflection. Every now and then, however, an alpha particle was scattered or deflected at a large angle. In some instances, an alpha particle actually bounced back in the direction from which it had come. This was a most surprising finding, for in Thompson's model, the positive charge of the atom was so diffuse, or spread out, that the positive alpha particles were expected to pass through the foil with very little deflection. Upon making this discovery, Rutherford exclaimed, it was almost as incredible as if you fired a 15-inch shell at a piece of tissue paper and it came back and hit you. Click on Rutherford's model to see the model of the atom that Rutherford proposed based on his experimental observations. Based on the results of his experiment, Rutherford postulated a nuclear atom. All of the positive charge and most of the mass of the atom is concentrated in a very small volume called the nucleus. Electrons occupy the remaining space of the atom. The radius of an atom is approximately 20,000 times larger than the radius of the nucleus. Most of the positively charged alpha particles pass straight through the diffuse electron clouds of the atoms. Some alpha particles pass close to the small positive nuclei and are deflected at large angles. A few particles score a direct hit on the nuclei and come almost straight back. Okay. So. Here's the important things to remember from that. One, you have to remember that Rutherford bombarded a thin gold foil with alpha particles, that he expected all the alpha particles to pass straight through. Most passed straight through, kind of like we can see in the picture here, most of them passed straight through, but some were deflected. And we have to remember his conclusions. Conclusion, one, the atom is mostly empty space. Two, the atom has a small, dense, positive nucleus at the center, and electrons are located around the nucleus. All right, those are the key things we have to remember from the Rutherford gold foil experiment. All right, so next, a few years later, this... Uh, physicist Niels Bohr came up with his planetary model. And he said that electrons travel around the nucleus in well-defined paths called shells or energy levels. He said that electrons in different energy levels contain different amounts of energy. Each shell can only hold a certain number of electrons. And he said that the lower levels get filled first. So, so here's a picture. And here we can see in the center the nucleus. And just like planetary orbit, right, you have here's a circle around the nucleus, here's another, and then out here is another. Okay? So he's saying that these electrons travel 
exactly in this well-defined path. Saying that there's different shells, right? Here we can see one, two, three shells or energy levels. And each one we can see has a certain number of electrons. This one has two, this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this outer one here for right now has one, two, <coughs> three. Okay. Saying that when atoms are filling up <coughs> their electron shells, the lower ones, and by lower it means closer to the nucleus, get filled first. Now, e even though there's something newer than this, for the most part, we're going to be using these Bohr planetary models in our diagrams just because it's easier to visualize where electrons are. However, there is a newer, more modern one, which is pretty widely accepted. It's called the wave mechanical model, or the electron cloud model. And this one says electrons are in orbitals, and it defines an orbital as a region where electrons are most likely to be found. So instead of only going right, in that distinct path, the electron could really be anywhere in this region. And we can see them here. So here's a region where the electron's more likely to be. Here's a region where the electron's more likely to be, less likely to be in the middle there. So the electrons exist in regions of, regions of space around the nucleus called orbitals. And you can never say precisely where an electron is located, only where it is likely to be. So the way to think of it is an electron is a nucleus right here in the middle, surrounded by this fuzzy electron clouds, where there are some places where the electrons are more likely to be, others where it's less likely to be. All right, question time. Okay. Three easy multiple choice questions based on the information that you were just given, so these should be easy to figure out, but of course we'll talk about them in class. That brings us to the end. I'll see you guys in school.